All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be talking about the metric tensor. So the metric tensor is gonna be incredibly important for future videos. So we're gonna really wanna establish what it is, how it plays a role in tensor calculus. And if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also make sure to go to my Patreon page where you can get exclusive content and early content. With that being said, let's now get in to the metric tensor. So we've seen that uh, each point in space can be thought of as a vector space. And we can now endow a vector space with an inner product. And in doing this, we promote our vector space to a metric space, okay? So we've had this picture before where we have some manifold, right? We haven't really talked about exactly what a manifold yet is, but for right now, let's just think about this as a, um, a, f a plane, if you will, or a field. And at each point in this field, we have a vector space, right? So this vector space has, we can think of this as a coordinate basis, right? We have E1, E2, and E3. This is at one point in space, okay? And we have coefficients on those. Those would be the V, the, the, the V here is actually the name of the vector space. Uh, we could have coefficients that, uh, or weighted values of these basis vectors to give us a vector in that vector space. Okay, now we go from that. So this here is the vector space picture. We go from there to the metric space picture. So the metric space picture. And to go from the vector space picture to the metric space picture, we now endow uh, the vector space at each point with a metric or an inner product, if you will. Okay. The inner product famously brings two vectors um, to real numbers. Uh, we recently found out that other types of objects will do this as well. All right, so the idea here is first, we have a mu, e mu, b nu, e nu. All right, so these are two vectors, not covectors, right, because we have the upper index, okay? Well, the A's and the B's are just coefficients, so we can bring those out, and then we have this. And the idea is that this inner product right here is going to be a number. So this whole thing is going to be a number, okay? But as we've seen before, there is a vector space of a rank two tensor, a rank zero two tensor, um, that we can use to mimic this sort of inner product effect. Okay, so this is a vector space. It's not part of, say, this space. It's a completely different space. It is a vector space because we have, it behaves like a vector space. Uh, however, it's separate, okay? And by setting the coefficients of these, of the inner product, the inner product in this vector space, what we're doing essentially is we're saying that there is another vector, there's another vector space out there, and it's a vector space of rank zero, two, that has some equivalence to this guy right here, okay? And we're gonna say that they are equivalent. And when we do that, we're saying that this, that this, that this space, this vector space of rank two, zero, two tensors is special. It's very special in, in, in the sense that it's equal to the, to, to the values we get for this inner product of the basis vectors in this vector space, okay? By setting the coefficients of this rank zero two tensor to the values of this inner product, um, this is what we get, right? So E zero zero, we get G zero zero, right? So this is the coefficient equal to this the coefficient equal to this, and we can go forward, we can continue 
until we get the, the, the fundamental relationship here is going to be this right here. Right. So this is the, my apologies for the dog barking. So this is that fundamental relationship. And so this, uh, just to reiterate the point here is that we have this inner product space and there's this equivalence between the inner product space and the, compo and the, and the components of this, of, of these G mu nus in this rank zero two ten or vector space. Right. We can also think of this as a tensor product space, but I like to think of it as a vector space because when it comes down to it, this thing behaves like a vector space where we have, um, it's linear, linear again, it's linear, it is a weighted, has contains weighted sums of the basis vector. Of the basis, I'll just say the basis because when we get into these tensors, it's sort of weird to think of the basis vectors as vectors, right? But so, the, but nevertheless, we these are the weighted sum values or the coefficients that we put on those on that basis within this space, okay? So, this equivalence, so we're again, we're drawing this equivalence right here, this equivalence down here. This equivalence makes for a special rank zero two tensor that we're going to call the metric tensor. Okay, so the metric tensor is right here. Okay, right. So this is our rank zero two tensor, and we're going to apply it to. This got erased. We're going to apply it to two vectors, and when we do that, this e alpha is right here. This e beta is right here. E mu, E mu, and E nu, E nu. Okay. And then this is all just, so this here, it's uh, Kronecker delta, Kronecker delta. So those are these guys right here. And we bring out the coefficients, right? So the coefficients are going to be G alpha beta, G alpha beta, A mu, A nu. These Kronecker deltas are going to drive the mu and the nu, or the, the, either the mu and the nu equal to alpha beta or the alpha beta equal to mu nu, right? Nevertheless, they're going to be equal. And this is what we get, okay? So, and this is a number, right? This, this here is a number, again, because this is, this here is a rank zero two tensor and zero two tensor takes in two vectors. Here are the two vectors and it gives us a number. So on the face of things, the, the so now we're gonna get into something called how we, how we can transition between a dual space and a, um, or a, a vector and a covector. And we're gonna find a very interesting link between these when we use the metric tensor. So on the face of things, this the the a mu and the b nu have nothing in common with it, with each other. We can find a vector space, however, that has does have something in common with one of these by using the metric tensor, and this is the essence of index gymnastics, right? So you're going to see a lot of videos on YouTube on index gymnastics, and what we really really want to understand is what exactly is going on when we do this kind of index gymnastics. Okay, so here is our metric tensor. So we've established that our metric tensor acts very similarly to an inner product. It takes two vectors, spits out a number. Okay, so what if we just feed it one vector? All right, so if we feed it one vector, we get this, okay? And we get down to this, right? So this E beta, this is just left out, right? It, it doesn't have another basis vector to um, uh, to sort of interact with, right? It doesn't have another basis vector it can map. So we're left with an E beta out front, or out back here, and e, G alpha beta A mu 
turns into G mu beta A mu because of this Kronecker delta, right? The Kronecker delta is going to drive alpha to, e to be equal to mu. So we get this. Okay. Well, this here, the mu's are in some sense sort of canceling out with each other, right? We're not, they're not really canceling out in the sense that you can you can cancel out two similar things in the numerator and denominator of some algebraic equation, but they are contracted over one another. So we can call this this right here, okay, because it has a basis of e beta, right? So this e beta got it got dragged down with us all the way down here. So that means this thing has to be a covector, okay? So this th th this thing must be a covector, and so we call it a beta. So this is a covector that is related to a mu by g alpha beta. So we can take a vector, this is our vector space, V, and here is our dual space, All right, so this is our dual space. This is our dual space right here, and we can go from our vector space a, um, V to our dual space V star by using the metric tensor, okay? And we, so we take a mu, we use G mu nu to get a lower mu. And G mu nu, we said, again, was these, the coefficients here are the co are what we get for the inner product here. So if you calculate the inner product here, we know what the coefficients are uh, for this metric tensor, okay? And then we can go from a mu, we can use g mu nu, the, these are upper indices, to get back to a mu, right? And this is the, we, you use sort of the same process as we've done up here for this purple, or for this more, this turquoise or whatever color this is, this procedure, right? So g mu nu with the mu, or mu beta, or sorry, g alpha beta, it's going to ultimately take a mu to a lower mu. And then this object here is going to go back from here to here, okay? So these two spaces are very important to one another, and we're going to see I've sort of summed it up right here and a little bit nicer. So vector space, the inner product of this gives us the coefficients for these guys. This space right here is used to take our vector space and go to our dual space. Okay. And then in our dual space, we can set the, the we can set these objects in here. We can take inner products of these objects to give us the coefficients for these guys, and that the, the, that's what gives us the coefficients here. And then we can take we can use this space to drive us back to a mu. So everything's connected. So these two guys, these two guys right here, this guy and this guy are connected by the metric tensor, okay? The metric tensor is used to raise and lower indices of higher rank tensors also. So suppose we had a, this. what is this? This is a rank 2-1 tensor, okay? This is, a, this is rank 2-1 tensor, and here's our metric. We do a similar process, and right, so we have our E gamma, or E gamma, is left out back here, right? So what's that going to be? That, that's going to mean that whatever object we get out in front is going to have to contract with this in order to get a, a number. And so this, the end product, has to be a, um, a covector, okay? So, and lo and behold, we do get this covector. T gamma, E gamma. And you can see this whole, how this whole process works. You can see also notice that we've sort of started to drop, uh, once you get really good at this, you can drop the basis vectors here, and you'll be able to say that G 
alpha, beta, t alpha, beta, gamma is equal to t gamma. Okay. So behind the scenes, this is all happening, right? But this is what you see in textbooks. All right. So let's do a shorthand example. Right, so a shorthand example, as I sort of alluded to already, is going to be, I'll erase these really quick because we do we want to do shorthand. G mu nu contracted with R mu nu a beta. Well, that's just these, the mu and the nu are going to contract, and we get these guys, this right here. And this is going to be, this is sort of alluding to something very important, very interesting, namely the Ricci curvature um, tensor, right, Ricci curvature tensor and the Riemann curvature tensor. And this is all possible because we made the metric tensor equivalent to the inner product in each vector space. Okay? So I want to close with something that you haven't really been presented to on YouTube before. I want to, I want to take a look at a different picture of what the metric tensor is doing. So what is the metric tensor actually doing? Well, if we have an object, R alpha, this is a vector, okay? It has one index. That means we have the entries are R1, R2, R0, and so forth. And so this is a, just a vector, okay? So if we give this thing two, two entries, two objects, alpha, beta, this is a matrix. And I'm, gonna, I'm putting bars around this matrix because we also have this guy right here. This is also a matrix, but these two things are matrices that when they contract with one another, uh, they can they give us a number, okay? So this is why I have this sort of matrix in quotes because not all tensors are matrices. Um, okay, and then we have, if we have three, three things here, right? So... Uh, this is sort of a column of matrices, right? Because we can imagine, suppose we had something that looks like this, right? So this matrix back here would be R alpha beta one, and then this one are alpha beta two, and the one up front here R alpha beta 3, for example. And we can e extrapolate the number of dimensions we want right, out of this. But this thing is a column of matrices. And then, what about 4? Right, so 4 things, this gets weird, right, because we have a group of columns now. This is a little bit difficult to visualize, but the best way I can sort of conceptualize this is we have this group, okay? And this group contains E, R, alpha, beta, gamma, zero, R, alpha, beta, gamma, one, if alpha, beta, gamma, two, alpha, beta, gamma, three. And these are all within a group. So we have to identify uh, delta first, and then when we identify delta first, we can, so suppose delta was one, then we're narrowing down on this one right here. So R1, 3, 2, 4, not 2, 4, um, 2, well that's going to be, this guy right here is going to be in this, col in this uh, column. Right, because of this two right here, this two right here. Right, so that is the group of columns. So we have a vector, a matrix, a column, and a group. Now, don't get confused with elements of group theory, or uh, because this is a this, is, this might be a little bit of a mis a nomenclature thing to do here. I just want to call it something else. Uh, but the don't confuse this with uh, group theory or uh, uh, anything of that sort. But anyways, so okay, so we're talking about the metric, 
what does this mean for the metric? This means that when we apply a metric, say, to R, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, here's R, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, that's this thing, this is a group of columns. Well, this contracts to R, alpha, beta. And R, alpha, beta, well, that's a matrix, right? So we went from here to here. Likewise, a metric will take us from here to here, okay? So th that's what this thing did. This is a conversion from a group, right? So I'll put group in quotes too because I don't want to confuse this with group theory. A group to a matrix. So this is one way of sort of conceptualizing how these things work. And real matrices, this is just a small minor note here, real matrices are in the form R alpha beta. Um, because this here, uh, if we want there to be a real number, right, we have to get R alpha, if we had R alpha beta and R beta alpha, then the things, these things will contract. Okay. You know, I'm, I, I won't confuse us. Right? I won't confuse us too much. I'll just erase this. The whole point of that is saying is to just take this lightly, this idea of a matrix lightly, because not all tensors are matrices, but we can sort of conceptualize some of them as matrices. And this is sort of a unique way of thinking about how, what exactly is getting converted into what, what exactly is being contracted over and how we can picture what exactly these, um, these uh, indices are doing. And anyways, if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also make sure to go into my Patreon page where again, you'll find um, exclusive content and early content as well, as well as summary sheets that are being posted. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.